Hello and welcome. So in this video, uh, we're going to talk about the production function model. Uh, and I don't want to get too bogged down into the details of things like uh, returns to scale, marginal returns to labor and capital, the wage and rental rates, and so forth, uh, that are all kind of important parts of the production function model. Uh, but I will get to those things eventually. So have a look at the video description if you want to skip ahead to like some kind of specific topic. Um, in this video, I kind of want to talk broadly and ab abstractly at a you know pretty high level about what the production function is. Uh, you know, go over like notation and assumptions just to make sure you kind of have all the basics right before we move on to those kind of like later later topics. Uh, the first thing I want to make clear is we're talking about the production function model is how it fits into an intermediate macroeconomics course. Uh, so if you're taking a micro course, you know, it's the production function, it looks the same, it, it works very similarly, but um, it's a bit different. In the macro course, um, this stand in here is a uh, production function for a whole economy. So in, in some sense, it's we're basically aggregating up all of those little production functions you learn in a micro course, where a production function in a micro course is usually for a firm. Uh, the production function here in the macro course is for an entire economy. So let's get started with uh, just the basic notation. So uh, we say here with the production function that y is equal to f of k and l. When we talk about y, um, it's think of it as a stand-in for gross domestic product or GDP. Uh, in the in the you know, macro accounting equation for gross domestic product, output is exactly equal to uh, income. And all of these are just a stand-in, you know, Y is just a stand-in for those, output or income. So what we're saying in a macro economy is that output income uh, is equal to some function of our factors. Uh, and usually the, you know, like a simple production function model, we're gonna keep things as simple as possible. So we're just gonna deal with, um, capital and labor as our factors, but you could also kind of imagine, you know, for a realistic economy, you also might have like um, oil, you might have um, different types of capital, like um, um, things like durable capital, that sort of thing. So these factors could actually go on quite a bit, but you know, we're trying to keep things simple in a macro course. So we're just going to stick with capital and labor for our factors. The other thing is when we're talking about capital, uh, excuse me, when we're talking about factors, uh, let's take about something like capital. So capital here you could think of as an actual number that we can measure. So capital would be the, the dollar value of uh, how much capital there is in the economy. The stand in here for the factor of labor would be maybe like the population of an economy or you know the total workforce of an economy. So these are actual real numbers that we could measure. Uh, we could also measure, you know, GDP. We could also there's there's accounting there's methods to measure what the gross domestic product is for an e for an economy. You could add up all of the income, or you could add up all the output. Those uh, theoretically should be exactly equal to each other. And what this model is saying is that you kind of mix these little factors together, the how much capital and labor there's in the economy, um, and uh, by some function, by some method, they're going to be combined to produce a certain amount of output. You could kind of see that this is a pretty simplistic view of an economy. In fact, this is uh, you know kind of like the like the keystone, the very basic building blocks of the neoclassical model, which is a part of an economics that's kind of carried over from probably 150 years worth of, of study. So this is this is a pretty old kind of baseline theory, and that's that's probably why you you know learn it in chapter one or two of a typical intermediate macro course. It's a very simplistic view of an economy. And in a sense, it, it kind of makes sense as a, um, you know, like, well, what is, what is the potential output for an economy? Well, the potential output for an economy is some, some functional form, some, some combination of how much capital and labor you have. That's kind of the max that this economy can produce. Great, that's simple, that's straightforward. So output here is some functional form of our factors. And in this course, we're gonna be dealing with capital and labor. Um, so what's this third part here? This third part here is our functional form. So again, we're saying that output is some function of capital and labor. And what we're saying over here is we're actually showing you how to combine capital and labor. You know, if you, get, if you had a dollar value of the capital in the economy and you had an account of the workforce in the economy, how are those things actually combined to produce the elite amount of output we see in the economy? So here, um, this is a typical, what we call a Cobb-Douglas production function. So you got capital here, which is going to be some number raised to the alpha, and then labor raised to the one minus alpha. So for alpha, think of that as a, that's going to be a number between, usually between zero and one. Um, this actually is going to work out to be the capital share of income, but we'll get to all that later. 
Uh, one thing to note is that the exponents above all of the factors here are going to sum to 1. So alpha plus 1 minus alpha, that equals 1. And this is going to be pretty typical of any production function you see in an intermediate macro course. Uh, that implies it's going to be a constant returns to scale. And then what's this a here in front of the, uh, you know, the factor portion of the production function? This a here you could think of as a combination of technology and uh, kind of institutions and other things that aren't in that, uh, you know, affect economic growth that aren't encapsulated by capital and labor. Um, a here is stand, stand in for total factor productivity. And, you know, in the same way that capital is, you can think of as the dollar value of how much capital is in the economy. Labor is the, the sum total of labor. Um, alpha, just think of as some abstract number um, that represents uh, the combination of technology and institutions and, you know, things like human capital, the quality of the court system, that sort of thing. And it's some number that multiplies the kind of production function portion of this model. So given a le certain level of capital and labor, if an economy has a really good high level of total factor productivity, it just multiplies this. Uh, suppose the economy has really bad technology and really bad institutions, like it has a you know, pretty corrupt government. You can think of this number as relatively small. So it's a relatively small number being multiplied by that you know, functional form that we combine our factors. Uh, and there's a lot we could say about total factor productivity, which we'll get to in a bit, a bit later. I do want to say a little bit more about this alpha. Um, usually, uh, in a lot of textbooks, that they'll just give you a number for this for this alpha, something like one third, which implies that this is going to be equal to two thirds. So you often see just uh, k to the one third um, times l to the two thirds. Uh, this again means when uh, these two sum to one, that we're going to have constant returns to scale. We'll also go for constant returns to scale a bit later. Uh, this number here works out to be um, the capital share of income. So what that means is in an economy, there's going to be a certain amount of production, right? You know, a certain dollar value of all the output of the economy. Well, how much goes to capital owners and how much goes to labor owners? Uh, we're going to show you that it works out that about a third of this income goes to capital owners and two thirds of this income goes to labor owners. So when these two exponents sum to one, uh, what it means then is that uh, that value right there is becomes the that factor share of income, which is pretty handy to keep keep in mind. If you can't remember that, don't worry about it too much because we'll go to it in a bit later. And for this video, that's kind of as simple as it gets, right? Um, you know, this is pretty simple understanding of how an economy works. You have some abstract way where you combine capital and labor. Usually in a typical course, we're going to have a functional form that looks like this. These things combine together to produce output, right? You increase capital, you increase output, you increase labor, you increase output, you increase the total factor productivity, you increase output. Uh, there's a war that destroys your capital, you decrease output. Uh, population drops, you have em emigration, that sort of thing, you reduce um, output pretty simple view of the world, right? Well, how well does this map to reality? Um, for the purpose of this course, let's just say it maps closely enough. Um, you know, later on, and particularly if you stick with economics, you'll discover that this doesn't really map to reality very well at all. Uh, and I feel that all too often, you know, economic students feel this like really strong sense of betrayal that uh, when they later discover that there are more accurate ways to model the economy. Um, but those those models, uh, you know, they're just going to be a lot more complicated and have a lot more moving parts, and they're just the type of thing that you wouldn't really go over in an intermediate macro course. So for now, uh, just to kind of start our understanding of how the economy works at an intermediate macro level, this is our production function, our kind of simple way to think about the economy. It's going to be a nice building block that fits into a lot of our other models to come. So it's really good to have a really good kind of understanding of exactly how this works. And uh, the later videos uh, under this kind of production function section are going to make us understand, um, you know, this kind of functional form and exactly what happens when we adjust capital, adjust labor, and adjust total factor productivity, that sort of thing. Cool. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions, um, have a look at the, the links in the description for more resources, and feel free to post comments. Um, thanks, and have a good day. Bye.